morning and welcome back to Keep Moving with the Senior Center. I'm Amy Beck, the Director of Senior Services in Hopkinton. And as you all know, the Senior Center is now in the process of trying to open up slowly, but we've been offering programs all along, a lot of them virtually. And so if you check your newsletter, this is May's newsletter. If you check your newsletter, you can see the list of programs that we have coming up. And we are starting to do some programs here and things are slowly opening up. So if you have questions about a particular program, or if you're interested in checking out where in the lineup of, of a program that you're interested in is opening, you can give us a call at 508-497-9730. And of course, we've been here all along. We've been able to help people with fuel assistance and getting rides. And any other of the number of questions that you may have or help that you may need. So again, feel free to give us a call. We cannot wait to have you back. We're really looking forward to seeing you all soon. And uh, know that it's coming. It really is. So today, though, I have two guests with me um, from the MWRTA, which is the Metro West Regional Transit Authority. And they're here to talk about a special new program that the town of Hopkinton has starting this month in May, but also just to give you a brief overview of a number of things that we have. Um, and all of this information um, is in your newsletter uh, in May's, it's on page four. And it's right here. It talks about all the transportation options that we are offering right now. We do hope to have our buses running again soon, but until then, there are ways to get where you wanna go. So with me today, um, I have uh, Eva Willens, the Deputy Administrator at the MWRTA, and Lisa Long, who is the call center manager. Um, and they're here to talk about what options they have. So Eva, I think you were going to start and give us a little overview of some of the things that the MWRTA has to offer. Yes, thank you, Amy. Thank you for having us today. It's our pleasure. Um, so we do have the, the Transit Authority does provide service for Hopkinton um, in a few different ways. One is our fixed route buses that run through Hopkinton Monday through Friday and they run on a fixed schedule. That's why they're called fixed route. So you can actually um, get a copy of our schedule either online or by calling us, we can mail you one. And it basically is like taking a bus in Boston, You know, any public transit. You get a schedule, you uh, look to see where that uh, route goes and, um, and at what time, and you go out uh, to a bus stop, or um, in this case, we also do flag down. So if you're along the route where our route, uh, it's actually called Route 5 that runs through Hopkinton, and, um, and you just um, you know flag it down in a safe area, the bus will pull over for you, or if there's a designated stop, um, which you could see um, by looking at the schedule where those scheduled stops are, you can just wait there at the time that it's supposed to be there. And probably within five to 10 minutes, um, it'll, it'll be there depending on traffic. Um, it goes many places um, and it starts here at the hub in, uh, on Blandon Ave in Framingham. And it runs, the Route 5 I believe runs all the way to Price Chopper in Hopkinton. So um, that's our fixed route service. Um, based on fixed route service, we also provide what we call ADA paratransit service. And that is the Americans with Disabilities Act required service if a public transit um, agency provides fixed route, it needs to and is obligated, obligated to provide this ADA paratransit service, which is service provided to those who can some, um, some of the time or not at all um, access our fixed route service. So that is an application-based service um, that can be found, that application on our website as well, or you can call us at the call center and um, get an application for ADA. And it is provided service door to door um, within three quarters of a mile of our fixed route that we provide. 
So you have to, in other words, you have to, wherever your origin or destination is, if you qualify for this service, you have to be within three quarters of a mile of the fixed route for that to occur. So that's basically, I don't know if you have any questions on that, Amy, that you would want me to elaborate on. So the, the well, two questions. The big mm -hmm. thing would be, where do they call to find information about that? I see the number right behind you on your sign, which is, I guess, 508-935-2222. Is that the number that they would use? So that's the main uh, number for administration. The best number to do for, uh, that would be for fixed route. Um, if... Um, somebody was interested in the ADA service or the dial -a ride which we'll talk about in a few minutes, then that would be the call center. Um, that's where Lisa is, you know, sets up her shop and um, receives calls based either to book trips or for information on how to book a trip um, or to apply for either the ADA or the dial -a ride service. So um, that's, uh, Lisa, what, could you tell me what that number is? I'm sorry, I don't want to Sure. 508-820-4650. Thank Great. you. Great. And then the, so, the, well, two things. Um, so if people have questions, they can call. Um, this, those are services that we've had in town for a while. Um, and kind of that's what precipitated the need and the desire for our next service that we'll talk about, which is Dial-A-Ride. But I did want to address COVID because everyone has questions. Um, all of these services are uh, are taking the safety precautions that that it requires. And I don't know if you want to mention that now, or we can talk about that a little later. So the safety precautions in providing the service for COVID. Yes. Okay. So yes. Um, so from the very beginning, I'm going to say probably since last the end of last March of 2020, we started implementing precautions um, on our vehicles. We cut the capacity to uh, on our fixed route. It's 16 passengers that um, can sit in those um, on the seats in the uh, fixed route, and we cut that to eight. So, and that is still the case. We are um, keeping that to 50% capacity. We've also um, enclosed the drivers with um, a barrier, a plexiglass barrier, um, just, you know, that it just adds, it adds added protection for the drivers as well as the passengers. And we also have not charged fares as well because that fare box, um, usually meant that the driver would have to um, coordinate with the passenger on occasion. And we wanted to make sure that uh, the less contact, the better during that time. And we have not implemented, re-implemented fares as of yet. It is being discussed, but as, as of now, it's still a free fare to ride fixed route, 88 paratransit or any dial -a ride. That's great. Actually, that answers one of my questions is how would they pay? So that's that's a different thing right now. So mm -hmm. that's great. So the fact that the ride only goes three quarters of a mile off the fi off the fixed route really kind of precipitated why we have been working for a number of years to try to bring in um, dial a ride. And it is a service that, that you can describe a little bit further, obviously. Um, but I am really excited that as of May 1st or May 3rd, actually, we started dial a ride in Hopkinton. Um, and it's, it's a slightly different than what the fixed route and the ADA, the ride cover. So could you describe a little bit, I, I'm not sure whether it's Lisa or Eva wants to describe this, what dial a ride really means to the um, seniors in Hopkinton? So Lisa, can I start? Absolutely. So I just want to, um, it, just the other day, we have an example of why dial -a ride is needed in some communities. So the three quarters of a mile obviously uh, doesn't encompass the whole community. So uh, we use dial -a ride um, to supplement for folks that may have difficulty using the fixed route. So dial -a ride is, um, like who can who can utilize dial -a ride anyone 65 and older or under 65 with a disability um 
it's a very, it's a lot, um, the application process is a lot um, less cumbersome than um, applying for ADA, which is a very um, specific, um, only disability-based uh, qualifying service. Dialeride is a lot more, um, less, it's less restrictive for sure. And so the other day we had a person contact us um, who lives in Hopkinton and um, he was contacting us for a family member and this person had applied for ADA service. He definitely qualified for ADA service. And Lisa went through that application process and, um, and qualified this person. However, he lives outside of the three quarter of a mile um, regulation for ADA. So we have already started the process of telling him about the dial ride. So it's a perfect, perfect example of why um, some communities need dial a ride. It fills in the gaps for those who cannot access the fixed route and for those who don't qualify or uh, for ADA or qualify but live further away and um, can't get within three quarters of a mile of the fixed route to take it uh, to get the ADA because ADA is door to door, which is what most people need. So, and dial a ride actually happens to be door to door as well. So I don't know if you wanna start going down our bullets here, Lisa, and, and talking about the other um, parts of dial a ride. Sure. Um, very nicely said, by the way, Eva. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> um, so Eva, as Eva said, it's, um, you know, any person who is age 65 years or older or anybody under the age of 65 with a qualifying disability. Um, so, you know, again, as Eva stated, the dial ride service is a door-to-door -door origin to destination, shared ride service. Um, and Amy, as you had asked about, you know, the precautions that we're taking for COVID um, and all that at this time, and Eva, please um, correct me if I'm, mistaken. Um, we only allow two people at the most on our vehicles. Um, and that is not including the driver. So it's the driver and two, two other passengers. So let me let me interrupt here. So shared ride means that you could be sharing the ride with someone else. Um, but that leads me to also ask the question, can they bring a companion if they need help assistance on anything? Absolutely. Um, they have two options, actually. Um, in, in normal times, um, if somebody is, uh, you know, unable to get on the vehicle by themselves or they need help with their groceries or um, they can bring what we call a PCA. Um, and normally, a, you know, a PCA is, is not charged, like I said, on, you know, normal times because they're helping that passenger. If they want to bring somebody with them as a guest, like say, you know, um, a passenger would like to go to Walmart, um, you know, and they want to bring their sister along, that would be considered a guest. So yes, they definitely can um, bring a companion um, or, or a PCA. Um, at, at the, you know, the time of the booking, uh, the reservationist will ask, you know, is anybody going with you? And you know that should prompt that should prompt the um, um, the person to say yes. I'm bringing a PCA or I'm bringing I'm bringing a guest with me. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so can I just clarify the two person on the van at once? So that would be two. Um, individuals that probably don't know each other and they've booked at the same time going in the same direction that kind of thing however we do allow if um, there is a person like as Lisa said that needs either a personal care attendant a PCA or a or would like to bring a guest so that would be three people right it would be the passenger the, the companion and the PCA mm -hmm. um, but they're all within the same group 
So it can yes. be up to three people on a trip. Great, thank you for clarifying that. That helps a lot. Thank you. So uh, getting back to one thing, what can these rides be used for? Are they anything? Um, can they go shopping and can they go to medical appointments? What is there anything specific or any limitations on what the ride is, what the dial -a ride is used for? Absolutely. Um, the, with dial -a ride, there is no trip purpose. Um, so if it is, um, if, you know, when you live in the town of Hopkinton, with dial -a ride, when you live in the town of Hopkinton, Ashland, Marlboro, Southboro, and Wayland, you can go to any of those towns you know, back and you know, back and forth as a round trip. Um, you can also go to Framingham and Natick, Sherborne, Sudbury, Holliston, and Weston. And these cons these trips are considered in area trips. Uh, we do have what we call extended areas, and these are these would be for medical only. Um, and those towns would include Berlin, Concord, and that would be Emerson Hospital only, Dover, Hudson, Lincoln, Maynard, Medway, Milford, Millis, Needham, Newton, Northboro, Shrewsbury, Stowe, Upton, Waltham, Wellesley, and Westboro. Quite a few towns. Yeah, that actually is good, but that's for medical only for those. Those are for medical only, absolutely. And we also have our extended, extended, um, and these are also for medical. Um, Boston, Brighton, Brookline, and Jamaica Plain, that's the VA only. Um, and also we do travel to Worcester for medical trips. Now with these extended areas, there are um, time limitations. Um, so for the, the, the first set of places that I, um, I said there uh, from 10 to two. So to first drop off would be 10 o'clock, last pickup would be two. And with the Boston and the Brighton, the first drop off would be 8.30 a.m. and the last pickup would be a 3.30 p.m. pickup. Great. So, you know, sometimes we have people who say, I just need a ride to a certain spot and I'm meeting a family member there who can bring me home, but they're, they're coming from work or whatever. Um, can rides be one way? Absolutely. Yes. They most definitely can. And can they, and this is a great question. Um, let's say I want to go to this store, but I'm going to walk across the street myself to get to this other store. Can, can they pick me up at a different location than where they drop me off? Yeah, just as long as on uh, um, the day of the booking, they um, articulate that to us. You know, okay. I want to be dropped off at, I would like to go to Price Chopper, but I'm going to go across the street and, um, you know, excuse me, pick, you know, I'd like to be picked up at CVS. Um, and with that being said, um, you know, they always have to have the addresses to where they need to go. And of course, the you know if it's a different address on the return, always the address on the return. That's yeah. great. I'd like to just jump in there just one second on that piece because I think um, sometimes people um, believe that uh, the reservationist will know where the price chopper is or know where the CVS is, and we all know there's a lot of CVSs, sometimes multiple in one town or city. So um, it is really important for them to have the exact address of wherever they're going because our program, our software program where um, the trips get booked and then scheduled need to have that exact address. And we wanna make sure you know we're going to the right CVS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so that brings me to the good, uh, a good question. How, so, well, there's, there, there's a whole process in this. First of all, they need to fill out an application and, and they can do that through us at the senior center. Can they do it through you as well? Or do they prefer to have them fill out their applications just through us? Do you want me to answer that at least? Yes, please. Okay. So, um, you know, usually how it works is it, it funnels through the COA. So um, if somebody calls us and, and, and wants to um, 
you know, uh, fill out an application or if we received one in the mail from somebody in Hopkinton because they were a little confused or they just didn't know that they had to go through the senior center, we would probably forward that to you at the senior center, uh, Amy, just because um, it just gives us another database and, and there may be something missing on there that you may know this person, the senior, um, and um, you know, it would be helpful to have your input on that. Great. So yeah. this is important for everyone listening. If you're interested in the Dial-A-Ride program, call the senior center first. We can certainly help you fill out an application, which we forward then to the MWRTA and then what happens? What's the process from there? Well, once, say once you receive the application, you again, you forward it to us. Uh, we enter it into the system, into our ADEPT system. Um, and normally it's like immediate. You know, once we receive that application and all the information is captured, um, what we do is um, send out a, a packet you know, letting, letting the person know about the service. Great. And then, um, and then they would call you to schedule a ride. Mm -hmm. And how much notice do you need for that? Two days in advance. Okay. Um, so if they want to go somewhere on Monday, the latest day that they, they would call would be on a Thursday. Okay. So it's, so it's always two business days, two correct? Two business days in advance, yes. And, and also just to go back really quickly, um, can we talk a little bit about the fair? Because yeah, the fair my, account- My next question be, was that. <laughs> okay, so the fair account has to be set up before the first trip is booked. So Lisa, can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. Um, so there's uh, several different ways that you can set up a fair account. You can either send a check or a money order. You can do it online yourself. Um, we would initially set up that, that account with you and, um, you know, with the password and all that. And, um, or if, you know, the person doesn't feel comfortable enough to go online and do it themselves, they can always call the call center and we would most definitely um, set up that account for them. That's good to know because not all seniors have access to uh, internet nor do they want to. And so you can still get these rides. You can call the, the call center. Once you've done the application with the senior center, you can then be in touch with the call center and they can help you uh, figure out payment, et cetera. Um, and that's important. Did you have anything more on that? because I have more questions. <laughs> um, just to clarify, Lisa, so now at this time where there's no fares being collected, um, how do new people, do they still set up the account and just don't have to put any funds in it right away? Is that how that works? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much how we've been handling it. Okay. And then once, you know, once we start collecting fares, then we'll, you know, start, setting up their accounts and, and, you know. So, so, if, so if, if a person uh, went through the whole process, applied, was approved, is in the system, has set up a fair account, but doesn't have any funds in their account yet, and then they call to book a trip, um, they can still uh, book that trip. And at that point, you would ask them to add funds either by sending a check or um, over the phone type thing. Yes. Okay. Excellent. You know, that's, that's the hard pay. Not everyone likes to give out a credit card and I can certainly understand that. Mm -hmm. um, but now, you know, just to reiterate, even though this is not the ride, which is specifically ADA, all of these buses are wheelchair accessible. So if you still need assistance getting on and off the bus and, and are in a wheelchair or whatever, the driver is there to, to help you with that. Um, and, and I have to tell you, we were able, I was able to meet uh, one of the drivers yesterday and he couldn't have been more pleasant, helpful, kind, all of that. So I know it might be different using some of these services because it's not your usual driver. It's not George and Louie who you know very well, but these drivers are fabulous. And, and I am, I was so glad to finally get to meet one of them and to, to take a ride. I took a ride on the bus and, uh, that was a great experience. I have to say it certainly is very easy. Um, and and I, 
I'm really excited that we have this here. I do have one question about the payment because you know this comes up. Um, often someone gets up that morning and they're not feeling well. And so they have to cancel a ride or you know something happens and they have to cancel a ride or <laughs> sometimes we forget we had a ride scheduled and someone else came to take us for our ride. What is the policy for cancellations or no-shows? Okay, so the policy for cancellation and no-shows, we do, we do ask if possible that they call um, at least three hours in advance to cancel their ride. And we do understand and sympathize that, you know, you know, especially being elderly, you wake up and you're just not feeling well that day. We understand that. Um, so, you know, we'll go ahead and cancel it for them. Um, you know, we do have policy in place that if, um, you know, that if you no show three times within a uh, it's been so long since I've gone through this policy. I apologize. I want to say a three month period. Um, the first, the first no show, what we do is we just let them know, you know, this is a no show. Um, you know, just please be mindful that, you know, going forward, if you get two more, then you could be suspended from the service. And again, you know, we do sympathize with, with folks that they don't feel well, emergencies come up and all that. Um, so, you know, we do take that information into account, um, you know, and if they, you know, cancel, if they're constant, not constantly canceling, but they cancel, 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 um, you know, that's a ride that somebody else could be using. Um, so, you know, we, do, we, we will send them a warning letter if they have, you know, excessive cancellations also. Right. So Lisa, you also, um, if somebody was doing, had a pattern of, of that practice, mm -hmm. you could, um, we um, contact the senior center if it's somebody in Hopkinton and just let them know and maybe um, the senior center can help with that as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's Absolutely. an issue that, you know, we don't know about. Right. Um, and also as far as um, forgetting maybe, which we all do on occasion, what we should be doing. Um, we do have the um, the uh, callbacks the night before, reminding it's an automated call that reminds the passenger that what time their trip is the next day and what time they'll be picked up and to be ready. And we also have this new technology as well that uh, the day of the trip, they will get a call, an automated call five about approximately five minutes before the vehicle's going to arrive. And that will also let them know that, you know, give them time to, you know, pack up their belongings or whatever they're gonna take on the trip with them um, and get down, you know, to their door. And that's just a, another thing um, also is, it is a door-to-door -door service, but it's door-to-door -door from the exterior of the building or the home. Mm -hmm. We don't go into any homes. Um, you know, the, the driver will be there to assist the passenger from their, say their front door of their home to the vehicle and then to the building or the, you know, location where they're going. But they, they don't go in elevators. They don't okay. normally go into the lobby and that kind of thing. Or upstairs well, to get them from a medical appointment. Right. Right. And, and I'm sorry, I've got to cut you off. We're at the end of the time. I can't believe oh, how quickly it wow. went. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you uh, filling out, uh, coming and, and letting people know what's happening. And if you have further questions, feel free to give the Senior Center a call at 508-497-9730. And again, thank you, uh, both of you and everybody. We hope to see you all soon. Thanks Great. a lot. Thank you. Thank you.